Burgi's Manual of Systematic Bacteriology differs from Burgi's Manual of Determinative Bacteriology in that the former A. Groups bacteria into species B. Groups bacteria according to phylogenetic relationships C. Groups bacteria according to pathogenic properties D. Groups bacteria into 19 species or E. All of the above. Let's begin by defining systematic bacteriology. So systematic is the evolutionary history of a group of organisms. Note, it is the phylogenetic relationship Well, phylogenetic relationships are evolutionary relationships. And that's systematic. So just put an S. And then D for determinative. We're going to define that one. And it's the identification of schemes based off of, oops, off of criteria such as like a cell wall, um, cell wall composition, morphology, differential staining, oxygen requirements, biochemical testing. So those are the criteria. Now that we've defined systematic and determinative, we're going to go back and see which option is the best answer for, uh, for this uh, multiple choice. Burgi's Manual of Systematic Bacteriology differs from the Burgess Manual of Determinative Bacterial in that the former, which is the systematic bacteriology, we want to know if we can find this definition in our options. Groups bacteria into species, well that's not here in our definition groups bacteria according to phylogenetic relationships. Well, we see here phylogenetic relationships. So that would be our answer, B. Bacillus and lactobacillus are not in the same order. This indicates that which one of the following is not sufficient to assign an organism to a taxon? A, biochemical characteristics. B, amino acid sequencing. C, phage typing. D, serology. E, morphological characteristics. Well, biochemical characteristics, you would know the characteristics of microbes by biochemical testing. And these tests can provide insight into the species niche in the eco um, environment or ecosystem. Two um, examples, selective media and differential media, are biochemical tests. Now selective media, they have, um, well it has ingredients that suppress growth of competing organisms and encourage growth of desired ones. So we have selective and then we have differential.
differential medial allows the desired organism to form a colony that is distinctive. So those are just a couple of um, biochemical tests that can be used to know the characteristics of microbes. Amino acid sequencing is the process of identifying the arrangement of amino acids in proteins and peptides. So it IDs the arrangement of amino acids in proteins and peptides. Oops. Okay. Phage typing. It determines which phage is uh, which phage a bacterium is susceptible to. So it determines which phage determines which phage a bacterium is susceptible to. D. Serology. It is the study of serum and the immune responses that are evident in serum. So it's the study of serum and immune responses that are evident in serum. And last one, E, morphological characteristics or structural characteristics. And it deals with the structure. For example, there are two organisms there can be two organisms that may look the same underneath a microscope, but may differ in the metabolic or physiological properties. Knowing just the structure isn't good enough. So let's go back to our choice, or um, our multiple choice. Bacillus and lactobacillus are not in the same order. This indicates that which of the following is not sufficient to assign an organism to a taxon? Well, like I said here for E, morphological characteristics or the structural characteristics, just knowing the structure is not good enough. You can have two organisms that will look the same underneath the microscope, but they can have completely different metabolic or physiological properties. So the answer is E. Which of the following is used to classify organisms into kingdom fungi? Well, fungi are chemoheterotrophs. They require organic compounds for energy. and carbon. So which of the following is used to classify organisms into the kingdom fungi? A, ability to photosynthesize, possess a cell wall. B, unicellular, possess cell wall, prokaryotic. C, unicellular, lacking cell wall, eukaryotic. D, 
absorptive, possess cell wall, eukaryotic, and E, ingestive, lacking a cell wall, multicellular, prokaryotic. Well, fungi, one, are not prokaryotics or prokaryotes. So we can eliminate B. We can eliminate E. Uh, A, ability to photosynthesize. Well, plants photosynthesize. We're going to put plants. Oops. <laughs> do, do. Plants. So we can cross out A. So we're left with unicellular lacking cell wall eukaryotic absorptive and possess cell wall in eukaryo uh, eukaryotic. Well, we have C, not all are unicellular. They have cell walls. So it cannot be C. What we're left with is D. Which of the following is false about scientific nomenclature? A. Each name is specific. B. Names vary with geographical location. C. The names are standardized. D. Each name consists of a genus and specific epithet. E. It was true. It was true. It was first designed by Linnaeus. Let's go through these choices. We have each name is specific, which is true. Names vary with ge geographical location. We'll leave that and see. The names are standardized, which is true. Each name consists of genus and specific epithet. That is true. It was first designed by Linnaeus, which is also true. So now we are left with B. Names vary with geographical location, which is false. It's not true. So the answer is B. You could identify an unknown bacterium by all of the following except A, hybridizing a DNA probe from a known bacterium with the unknown unknown's DNA, B, making a fatty acid profile of the unknown, C, specific antiserum agglutinating the unknown, D, ribosomal RNA sequencing, and E, percentage of guanine and cytosine. In order to answer this question easily, we want to know um, what can or how can the unknown be identified. Let's start with uh, choice A, hybridizing a DNA probe from a known bacterium with the unknown DNA, unknown's DNA, which is something that can be do done to identify the unknown bacterium. Making a fatty acid profile of unknown, of the unknown. So fatty acids are a constant for a particular species. So the known fatty acids can be compared to the fatty acids of the unknown. So it's a way to identify. So we're going to put true here. Specific anti-serum agglutinating the unknown. Now, when an antigen is present, this sparks an immune response and antibodies are produced. Now, these antibodies that are produced can be used to identify microorganisms, and this solution is called anti-serum. So this is a way to identify an unknown bacterium. Ribosomal RNA sequencing. 
All cells have ribosomes. It is a signature sequence in their RNA, a ribosomal RNA. So that can be used to identify the unknown bacterium. E, percentage of guanine and cytosine. Well, guanine and cytosine content is different um, in well, guanine and cytosine content is um, different in different species and can reveal the degree of species relatedness, but it doesn't identify. So that would have to be a false. So the answer is E. The wallless mycoplasmas are considered to be related to gram-positive bacteria. Which of the following would provide the most compelling evidence for this? We want to know the most compelling evidence that can hold true to how the wallless microplasmas is related to gram-positive bacteria. Let's go over our choices. A, they share common rRNA sequences. B, some gram-positive bacteria and some mycoplasmas produce um, catalase. C, both groups are prokaryotic. D, some gram-positive bacteria and some mycoplasmas um, have cocci-shaped cells or coccus-shaped cells. And E, both groups contain human pathogens. We want the most compelling evidence. Well, the most compelling evidence would have to be A. They share common rRNA, ribosomal RNA uh, sequences. Even though that there are some true statements here in these sequences, they're asking for the most compelling. Now, using the following choices, A, animalia, B, fungi, C, plantae, D, firmicute, gram-positive bacteria, E, proteobacteria, gram-negative bacteria. Now, into which group would you place a multicellular organism, multicellular organism that has a mouth, and lives inside of a human uh, of the human liver. Uh, which organism has mouths? Animalia, fungi, plantae, firmicutes, proteobacteria. Well, I hope you chose A. <laughs> the answer is A. Animalia. They have mouths. Into which group would you place a photosynthetic organism that lacks a nucleus, lacks nu a nucleus, and has a thin peptidoglycan cell wall surrounded by an outer membrane? Well, we would have to go through our options, our choices, animalia, fungi, plantae, firmicutes, or proteobacteria. Well, presumed to have the proteobacteria presumed to have arised from a common photosynthetic ancestor. So the answer is E. because it can be photosynthetic. It's a bacteria, so it lacks a nucleus. It's a bacteria because it has a thin, and it's um, a gram-negative because it has a thin peptidoglycan wall and an outer membrane. That describes what a gram-negative is and what proteobacteria are. Use the following choices. One, 
9 plus 2 flagella, 2 70S ribosome, 3 fimbria, 4 nucleus, 5 peptidoglycan, 6 plasma membrane, which is or are found in all three domains. So the three domains are Eukara, Archaea, and Bacteria. Out of these choices here, which ones fall underneath all three domains? Is it two and six, uh, ribosome, 70S ribosome and plasma membrane? Is it just five, peptidoglycan or C, two, four and six? 70S ribosome, nucleus, and uh, six plasma membrane, or D135, uh, nine plus two flagella, fimbria, or peptidoglycan, or all six. Well, we know that peptidoglycan is not in eukaryotes, so we can cross out B and then we can cross out D. We can also cross out E, so we're left with A and C. Now the difference between these two are um, is four and nucleus. We know that archaea and bacteria, they do not have a nucleus, so we can cancel out C. What we are left with is A, and that is our answer. Let's move this up a little bit so we can see our next and last question. Okay. Which is or are found only in prokaryotes? We have nine plus two flagella, nucleus, or plasma membrane. Well, prokaryotes, they do not have a nucleus. So we can cancel out four, four and four. We're left with B and C. So B is three and five, which is fibrie or fimbria and peptidoglycan. And then C is one and five. Nine plus two flagella and peptidoglycan. Well, we know that prokaryotes do have fibria. So the answer would have to be B.